I've got some concerns about this, which we'll address in a minute. We're returning to file 221841. I didn't have the paper file in front of me. I was looking at the electronic file. I have it now. The process server, Ms. Darlene Correll, swore that she personally served Colby Martin at the Bliley Road address on January 21st, 2023. I don't believe that's true. Uh, Mr. Martin, how long have you been in custody in the Van Buren County Jail? Since last year. It's been over a year. And nobody personally served a summons and complaint on you in January of 23, is that correct? Yeah, you're correct. Was that the summons, Judge, or a default in January? No, that's the summons and complaint. I'm going to show mm -hmm. cause Darlene Correll to come in here to find out why she should not be found in contempt for falsely swearing that she personally served a defendant that she did not, but that's a separate issue. Is um, there any indication he was served at the jail? I thought there was some no, discussion. No, there is not. This is a proof of personal service sworn to by this officer that she personally served him at Bliley Road. Hmm. And uh, as you know, our local process server, Sergeant Bruce Morse, has an impeccable record and I trust him implicitly. I have a lot of out of county process servers that I do not trust. And I've barred some of them from serving process in St. Joe County. Uh, but uh, that's an, another, he is here. All right, the next matter we're going to address is entitled Capital One versus Colby Martin. But this is in the matter of, let me start this and stop it and separate it. Uh, process server, Darlene Correll. Ms. Correll, will you come have a seat right over here? Also present is attorney Jeffrey Werber. Are you here on behalf of Capital One or on behalf of the process company? I'm here on behalf of Capital One, Your Honor. Jeff Werber, P67124. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> there we go. This is in the matter of Capital One versus Colby Martin, file number 221841. Mr. Jeff Werber is here on behalf of the plaintiff Capital One. He was at some of the earlier hearings. This is in regarding the service of a subpoena of a notice of the complaint. Um, and the process server, Darlene Correll, is here live and in person. Ms. Correll, will you please raise your right hand? You swear or affirm any testimony you're about to give in this matter will be true to the best of your knowledge and belief. Yes, sir. Let me tell you what I know and why I caused this hearing to be scheduled. Capital One sued Colby Martin on a credit card debt in the amount of $5,412.18. And he was actually pretty cooperative regarding that. Um, the lawsuit was filed in December of 2022, and the defendant was allegedly served on January 21st of 2023. Uh, Darlene Correll, process server, swore that I personally served a copy of the documents upon Colby Martin, age 37, race male, height 5'10", weight 175, glasses at 
97723 Blyley Road, White Pigeon at 2.37 p.m. That was not the case. Uh, Mr. Colby Martin was in jail in the Van Buren County on a homicide charge on January 21st of 2023. His mother wrote to us in March and uh, informed, I, we knew it, but his mother, Shelly Martin, S-C-H-E-L-L-I-E, wrote to the court and said these papers were never served. They were shoved in my front door. And uh, then she looked at them. We ended up having Mr. Martin brought in by Zoom. Uh, and uh, he, I think, consented to a judgment. He's not going to be in a position to pay on it for a while. This has happened three or four times in my career where a process server has sworn that they serve process where the court had reason to believe that they did not. And uh, on at least two of those occasions, I barred the process server from serving process henceforth in St. Joseph County. Um, what company do you work for? Great Lakes um, press, um, Civil Service. And where are they out of? Um, I believe is Burton, Michigan. Where are you from? Kalamazoo. Portage, actually. Portage, Michigan. One of the issues is, there are a couple. One, you could be in contempt of this court. Two, you could be guilty of a crime, uh, perjury for swearing to a legal document that was not true. This was notarized by someone, uh, but I have reason to believe this service was not made on this defendant or anybody. Um, and that undermines the entire integrity of the process. If the court can't determine that the service was proper, uh, Mr. Werber, I'm sure you're aware of this. There was a recently very big scandal where a firm in Oakland County, I think, had entered in hundreds of default judgments where they had false sworn service. Uh, several, several of those people are in prison, the lawyers, uh, right now we're disbarred and sent to prison um i don't know what the status here is are you willing to explain this or do you wish to uh exercise your right to not discuss it i can i will explain yeah all right what happened well um for starters that um i had been with the company for three weeks um and the that monday before the 21st i had taken a bad fall and um was really not supposed to be going out and doing any serves. Um, I was, I was, on, um, I was, I, it was a slow process. Now, I um, remember going out to White Pigeon. I don't exactly remember being at that house. I looked at the house and everything on uh, Google Maps and I don't remember that. However, um, I know that Saturday when I did go out, I was in a whole lot of pain and I shouldn't have even been out. And I'm going to have to say that I probably did put that in the door just because I, after I was done with that, I just wanted to go home. What I found, one guy had filed dozens of motions for second summons indicating he attempted to serve process and was unable to. I think what he was doing was looking at the properties on Google, Google map because he would say he served one property at 237 and then he served another property 26 miles away at 242. So I think he was sitting at his computer looking at the properties on Google Maps and saying that they were sworn. I'm not sure what happened here. 
but your story isn't very credible. I was definitely there. All right. And I guess you just made up a description of the person that you served. Um, that isn't his description. He's younger than 37 years old, but, um, and then you swore that it was true. Um, he has an airtight alibi and that he was in jail. Um, and uh, fortunately, uh, we discerned that and brought him here by Zoom and Mr. Werber met with him and they settled the case. Um, Mr. Werber, does your company have an ongoing relationship with Great Lakes Civil Service? No, I don't believe they do much uh, process serving for us. Um, we use them in, a, in, in, in certain areas where it's difficult to get other process servers to go out. Um, and unfortunately, White Pigeon is one of them. Uh, well, so we have several process servers here. The person that does most of our service, Southwest Michigan Legal Services, is a retired sergeant from the Sheriff's Department. In fact, he's still deputized. Sergeant Bruce Morse and his wife do an excellent job and make my life much easier. And if they say somebody was served, somebody was served. I'm sure. And, and um, Your Honor, if I may, I would add that in my limited experience with, uh, with this company, I have not had any problems. Uh, I know that the owner is involved in the Michigan, uh, I believe it's the, the Process Serving Association. Uh, he tries to fail, follow the best practices. Uh, we do audit our process servers um, a couple times a year. So, in my experience, I have not had any issues. This is in fact the first one that has come up and that's why I'm here observing uh, because you know, obviously I don't want this to happen. I don't want a reputation uh, of, of this kind of thing happening. And I was just as curious as you were to, to, to see what happened here. Well, unfortunately we were able to figure out what was going on before the hearing and we brought uh, the defendant in by Zoom, right? Um, and you were able to conduct your business. Had we not, um, let's say it was just Joe Schmo, um, and we didn't know that he was the murder was of some notoriety, terrible fact situation, and um, so we put two and two together, and then with the assistance of his mother, but a absent that a default judgment would have entered uh, they would have been able to attempt collection and the person was not actually served um one time when i first became judge we had a property that was served on us 12 at uh near modville at the county line where saint joe county joins cass county And at the Cass County line running west, the numbers start in sequence, 10001, 10003. On the St. Joe County side of the line, the numbers start at zero and run east. And so they're going in two different directions with the same number sequence. And so I believe what happened in that case is the process server was following the numbers and he was in the wrong county. He described the house and I, anyway, I never quite got to the bottom of it, but the person who contended they weren't served. The other one was, a, other two were gross frauds. But I don't trust your judgment. I don't trust you to serve any process in St. Joseph County. I can't speak for your company, but henceforth, um, I don't think the prosecutor is going to proceed with a criminal charge, but it is a crime to falsely swear to a proof of service. But you're henceforth barred from serving process in St. Joseph County.
the fact that you didn't feel good isn't a sufficient response. This man was sued for six thousand plus dollars that he probably did owe, but um, so I don't know if you're going to continue in this field. If you do, lesson learned. I don't think this will ever happen again, but it ain't going to happen here because I don't trust you, and I didn't really believe your answer either. But uh, I'm not going to take any further action other than you from barring you from serving process here. Do you have any questions? No, sir, and I plan on um, not serving anymore. All right, you're free to go. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Appreciate your time today. Thank you. Have a good week. Thank you.